For these six scientists, the world is about to get very small for a while. The five Russians and one German are test subjects in the first of a series of experiments on deep space travel. They're not going to space, though. They'll be isolated in a pod inside a Moscow medical research facility for 17 days. This is a team of professionals. Indeed, each of them is a professional in his own field. Altogether, we're like parts of a mosaic that creates a team, which in our Earth research mission will accomplish all the tasks that we face. After the press briefing, it was down to the hall housing the mock spacecraft. It'll be their home and laboratory for at least 50 different experiments directed at how humans might cope on flights to Mars and beyond and limited contact with Earth. Final waves and in through the hatch. Sirius 17 will be followed by a four-month mission next year, eight months in 2019 and a full year in 2020. You may think it's a bit strange locking a bunch of people inside a tin can here on Earth and running tests on them when there's actually a space station orbiting the planet and has been for decades, seemingly much more suitable for these sorts of experiments. But there are actually key reasons why this works. It's not that the International Space Station isn't being used for similar tests. It is. But Earth-based analogues are much safer, cheaper and in some ways can better mimic deep space travel. The ISS wasn't designed to be an, uh, an isolation environment. It does. I mean, you're, you are isolated, but more and more, you know, crew members have a, you know, a cell phone in their pocket. They can call their friends. Uh, there's a requirement. There's a, there, there are many thousands of commands that get sent from mission control to the vehicle uh, every day. With NASA, Russia and the European Space Agency all working together, this experiment is also another reminder of the truly cooperative nature of space exploration. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera, Moscow.